Hello and welcome to episode 96 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is June 9th and together with Robert and Goran, we are here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello everyone. As you can see, we are again in a, in a smaller round. Um, Goran is uh, busy with um, um, customers and Robert is actually on vacation. So I'm happy to have Martin Pankratz um, with us again. Um, in the past, we, we talked a lot already about the Power Platform. We talked about um, different ways how you can use Power Platform to connect to an SAP system. We talked about the different connectors. We talked about um, how easy it is to build new applications and stuff like that. Um, we had built just last week where we um, announced some really cool new features. However, sometimes it's the small things that can really make a difference. Um, so in our engineering team, um, Martin and I and, and others um, for SAP and Microsoft, we are running an environment where others can also um, yeah, see the work that we're doing basically. So obviously onboarding new colleagues there can be um, yeah, a time consuming challenge, I would say. That is if you are not using Power Automate. So today um, Martin um, joins us again and he will walk us through our internal automation journey, so to say. And we'll, we'll take a look at um, what we do in, in our environment, what would have been the manual steps and um, what we have done to create some some cool and easy Power Automate flows um, to help us with the whole onboarding process. But before we hand over to Martin, um, I have some again only very few, but, but still some some pretty cool um, um, blog posts. I would say uh, in the past, I think in the past ten times or something, whatever we talked about um, private link, um, obviously Martin was the go-to person, and actually. Um, let me actually click here on this link. Martin has a fantastic um, landing page for, for all the contents for, for private link. So, so we talked about this a lot of times already. Um, so really how to get started with private link. But um, today or actually uh, yeah, a few days ago, um, Harut from, from SAP also um, published a, a blog post about private link and especially about using CUP, the cloud application programming model um, with the cloud SDK um, and use this with uh, with private link. So um, there is a nice um, uh, architecture overview where you can see here um, this is your SAP system running on Azure. And as before, the, the, the whole idea is that um, when you, the business technology platform is also running on Azure, then you can use here this private link um, connectivity to really um, connect with your development that you do on the business technology platform. So in, in this specific case, a CAP application um, and connect this um, to your um, SAP system running on Azure. And yeah, uh, it's a it's a really nice um, blog post again that um, outlines all the steps. I think um, uh, leveraging a lot of the information that Martin that you have published in the past, um, but but bringing this together in another um, view on yeah, how, how we can use the private link connectivity um, with the business technology platform. So I, I really like the the idea that others are, um, are now obviously also picking up the work that you have done and uh, yeah, uh, developing some some cool new scenarios on top of this. Yeah, Harut and I wanted to make sure that uh, CUP and the Cloud SDK support us natively. Yeah? So for the other proxy providers, yeah, like uh, on-premises via Cloud Connector and Internet, obviously, this was already there, but this new provider also needs to make its way into all the libraries and other components yeah, within SAP. And this is um, like adding, uh, checking one off the list, yeah, the CUP and the Cloud SDK. Yeah, and I think especially CUP is something that is used by a lot of um, SAP developers. So it's, it's fantastic to see this now also working with private link. Sure. Okay, um, moving on. Yeah, th this was uh, your uh, summary blog post, your, your landing page for the, the private link service. But actually what I wanted to highlight next is um, we also talked about this some time ago. Um, Robert Biro has uh, had started to create um, uh, a document on docs.microsoft.com about um, integrating um, 
Azure with Rise on Azure. So, so basically, or or there there are a lot of customers that are using Rise with SAP on Azure, and they also have other workload on Azure, obviously. And now um, the the question was how how do we connect these things? And in the past we had started with um, things like um, a simple VNet peering. So so let's say you have some other virtual machines. What is the um, recommended way to do the VNet peering with your Rise on SAP subscription? Um, and now he's expanding um, this uh, this integration topics with come on uh, here. There we come um, to to the topics where we talk about um, other um, Azure services. So so still following the um, uh, actually no this one here. Th that's where we start here with the new topics. Still following the approach um, uh, that yeah you you have some services on Azure. You have your SAP system now in Rise. Um, on Azure and what options are there to to connect? And um, obviously, when we talk, for example, the the data integration, obviously this is something that we see with a lot of customers that they are um, using um, data tools on the on the Microsoft side, but obviously the data is also in the SAP system. And now, what options are available there? So, and and one um, commonly used option is to use the self-hosted integration runtime, which needs to be installed somewhere where the um, shared, the self-hosted integration runtime has access to the SAP system. And here, um, Robert outlines um, how this can be done. So you install it um, in your Azure subscription, you still leverage the VNet peering that we also discussed um, up front. And then there are different vehicles or mechanisms how you can um, connect to your SAP system and then make this um, the, the information available, for example, in, in Synapse or ADF or something like that. And then same thing, um, I mean, uh, we are talking about Power um, Power Platform today. Same thing with Logic Apps. Um, in a lot of cases there, if you want to use, um, for example, the RFC connector, um, if you want to connect to BAPIs, um, then um, you need the on-premises data gateway. Um, there, same approach like uh, like before. You you can install a virtual machine in your Azure subscription. You um, leverage the the VNet peering between your Azure subscription and SAP's Rise Azure, Azure subscription, and then you can use um, yeah, for example, the SAP ERP connector for Logic Apps or in Power BI to also connect to your SAP system. And now the monitoring solution is also something. Um, that is um, natively obviously available with um, with running your SAP system on Azure. Um, now, when we do this in the context of RISE, um, then there, there's a caveat that um, this is um, um, not um, supported to use this, this kind of integration still. I mean, there, there are some discussions ongoing um, how you can use the um, Azure monitoring functionality um, with your SAP system, but I think this is this is just an an outlook um, what we potentially can do there. But obviously, Rise with SAP is a is a, an offering that is um, managed and, and monitored by SAP. So yeah, we'll see if if this is uh, necessary or or if this is just something um, that you can completely ignore in in a Rise context. Well, you're not subscribed to your telemetry for Netflix as well, yeah. You, even though some people would say it's also life threatening, yeah. <laughs> no, but but that's that's a perfect example. Thank you, exactly. Um, because it is an, an an managed service offering, there there should not be a need um to do this this monitoring. But let's see. Um, one additional topic is um. We we talked about in the past um about the custom engagement initiative that we have been running on event integrations. So as we talked about on the SAP side, we have the SAP event mesh. On the Microsoft side, we have Azure event grid and um, that um, we are working in this um, customer engagement initiative on bringing these two eventing worlds together. So basically that in the end, one, one direction, for example, if you're an SAP developer that you can connect to the SAP event mesh and get all the events that are available in event grid. Now, with this announcement um, that we have now in public preview, um, you get access to events also from the Microsoft Graph and more specifically from um, events from Azure Active Directory, Outlook, SharePoint, Teams, and, and a few more. But, but obviously, especially um, Outlook and Teams are probably very interested, interesting. So these events can now be made available in Event Grid. 
And now if you think about the next step, and, and again, think about this custom engagement initiative that we um, talked about in the past, potentially these events could then also be avail made available in SAP event mesh. And then um, developers on the SAP side should be able to very easily um, consume these events from the Microsoft Graph as well. So I think that was also some something really cool that I'm sure um, over the, the, the long term will will um, provide a lot of be benefits um, th for, for for our customers. Good. And then a final point. Um, I mean, we we talked about this already, um, but um, since Martin is also in the call today, um, if you have not done yet, um, and maybe you, if you're living in London or um, if you have plans to, to go to London or if you have time to join remotely, um, there is the Integrate 2022 event um, next week. So starting on June 13th um, till 15th and um, next to some uh, some some yeah, highlights um, or, or some prominent speakers here. Actually, Martin, you're in the, in the second row. I just see this. We also have Martin there um, on site. Exactly. So Martin and actually also um, Will, Will Eastbury, both of them were also on the podcast before. They um, will be at um, Integrate and Martin, maybe um, a few words. I think your your session is also mentioned down here, but yeah, maybe you can also quickly talk about this one. Yeah. Yeah, like like we did uh, on the show the, a couple of weeks back. Yeah. So we will be talking more about in depth on uh, all data APIs for for SAP and how to work with them in API management. And we've prepared some really cool. Um, interactive um, scenario for, for the session on site and remotely. So you will be able to participate uh, quite nicely there, kicking off APIs and um, as a reward, uh, get something Ninja Cat related. So I, I already got a sneak peek at this and I can only say um, you, you should definitely um, attend this one and, and, and participate in the session. And there's a Ooh. discount code that we distributed via LinkedIn and uh, Twitter. So let me quickly get it also for you. It's oh, let me do the, the, the link to the tweet. Mm -hmm. Let me just check. open it up in a second. Yeah, there it is. But I will also put this in the show notes. Oh, come on. Um, so that others can also easily um, check this out. Okay, just a second. It's verifying, and here we go. No, come on. Here it is. Yeah, there's your um, discount code. Perfect. Okay, so so that was all that I wanted to um, highlight for this week. So so with this. Um, Martin, let's uh, hand it over to you. Um, as always, I, I think everyone knows you already, but still maybe one sentence about yourself and then um, let's take a look at the, the environment. My pleasure. Martin Pankras, um, I'm a giant team member of Holger, yeah? also looking at the integration topics for, for both, both sides, SAP and Microsoft, and uh, with a special uh, passion yeah, for integration topics and uh, API. So also reason why API management is like close to my heart there in the sessions. But Perfect, yeah. So let me share my screen. And before we go into the details, let's see where we need to go. Yeah. So our environment for where we showcase what you can do with SAP and Microsoft tooling um, is obviously in multiple, it's distributed over multiple parts. Yeah. And uh, the Microsoft Teams client is one. Yeah? For this one, you need an Office or an M365 account. Yeah? So we have here uh, the a compliance approved name, Nestor Wilke, yeah? which is part of every demo environment that you can spin up yourself. Actually, we have a list where you can subscribe to the trials for everything that's involved here. Yeah? And um, so, so we need M365 accounts that we need to distribute to the users of this environment. Yeah? The same is true for the business technology platform where we host the um, the apps so that we can have a nice narrative around this, yeah? how we explain uh, what Microsoft plus SAP actually means. Yeah? OK, so I'm logging in here with Nestor. 
there we go. So that's the second user that we require. Yeah? Someone who has access to BTP. Since we re um, configured single sign-on yeah, and um, shadow user creation, uh, this happens on the fly yeah, when, when you log in, um, but still you need to have this in mind. Yeah? This is also required to, to be handled somehow. Yeah? BTP access and M365. So, and if there's something like the web GUI, or you want to show something that happens on the back end, you also need a user for that one. Yeah? Either come up with a single sign on again, yeah, or provide an, another user again yeah, to, to, to deal with this. Yeah? Or at least have in mind that you have to have user mapping or authorizations at this level too. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we already have quite some some moving parts yeah, and things to assign. And this is only on the surface yet. Yeah? So what about you want to show actually moving moving components uh, on, on Azure itself, on the portal? Yeah? There again, you have um, our role-based access controls, yeah? which are handled through this, this part here, for instance, and on resource group level. And um, how, how do you make sure that people get automatic access to this one as well, yeah? Reader writes at least, yeah? so that they can see what, what's in here, so they can um, show a couple of properties or use the, the UIs associated with this. Yeah? So there's like four levels of things that need to be considered yeah, when you give access to someone, yeah? so that they are assigned to the right um, roles, the right authorizations, the right groupings. How do you deal with that? Yeah? Maybe with two to three colleagues, you can get by and doing this ad hoc yeah? and maybe get a ping, oh, I'm missing this, or oh, okay, where can I get you this? Yeah? And then you have like a couple of iterations until everyone is happy and can see what they need to see. But if you do this on global scale yeah, with hundreds of colleagues, then um, you're, you're in trouble. Huh? And Martin, that, that's exactly how we started, right? And because yes. I think I, I really want to highlight that this is something that we obviously see also with other customers, obviously in, in different scenarios, but that's exactly how we started. We, we, we built up this environment. We obviously both of us used it um, to, to, to do demos to customers, to do demos to, um, to partners, to prototype certain scenarios. And then the first colleagues came in and said, sure, we can um, give, give you access um, with the right licenses and, and everything and uh, that you have the permissions to access the Azure resource groups, that you have access to, to teams and, and so on. But it was a manual process. And as you said, for five users, that's no problem. It, it takes some time. Maybe you forget something and then the, 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 the um, colleague pings you again. Oh, I get an error when I get this. OK, then I forgot to do this. So you do this manually, which works out fine for five users. For 10 users, it's getting annoying. For 50 users, it's you, you cannot handle this anymore. Yeah. And uh, since this is quite popular with, with our colleagues yeah, to showcase live demos, yeah, <laughs> we quickly grew out of the manual process. Yeah. Yes. All, all right. Yeah. So, so we see the scope that needs to be taken care of. Yeah. And um, for us, the, the easiest way of addressing this is um, providing a nice um, Microsoft Forms, which is also part of the M365 portfolio. And in here, um, you have like something that is mobile ready um, on the public, inter public internet, knows Azure Active Directory. Yeah, so if you publish this within your organization, yeah, then you have really a nice um, like process around this already. Yeah. And we came up with a couple of questions um, and um, descriptions so that the user knows what to expect. One thing that we added along the way, for instance, was this. Um, we got feedback from some of the participants saying, well, wh where do I get um, my pings now? Where do I get the credentials and further information for the onboarding? And actually, we didn't provide anything in here because we thought that the email and the Teams chat push notification that you get would be like obvious enough. Yeah, but even then, we added a sentence here so that people know what to expect next, where to go look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, this is on making sure why do you want access? Yeah, so when we get the, the approval request, yeah, Holger and me and the rest of the team, then we know, okay, valid, valid point, yeah, you should get access. And um, who you're presenting to, 
and something like okay where's where's the information coming from so for us to to learn how this is distributed within our company yeah? and then here um, a note again how uh, will it go from here once approved yeah so you get a nice email and teams notification with with in information that you require yeah? And as, as you said, there was also continuous um, improvement, I would say. Mm -hmm. So um, we released this once, then um, the automation and, and obviously the things that, that we'll look at in, in, in a second um, was used. There were some hiccups, then we got some feedback that this is unclear, that is unclear. We improved that. And so constantly it evolved and got better and better. Exactly, yeah. So and from here, um, you can create a automation, a workflow, based on the responses that were submitted through these forms. Yeah? So in here, you can actually then see there's a trigger um, within this particular Power Automate flow yeah, that is executed each time someone submits um, this request. And in here, we can uh, then work with what they provided there, yeah? with the justification, what um, Microsoft ID they have, yeah, so that we can actually identify them when we post a, an answer to them or reply with an email. Yeah. And in here is like our gate, yeah, where, where we're actually checking um, if we should let those requests go through and give access to them. Yeah. And this is a integrated uh, task. This, this approval thing is a standard uh, Power Automate object. Yeah which is natively integrated already with Outlook and with Teams. Yeah? So we, there's nothing extra to be done here. Yeah? So you just provide the, uh, the target and it then triggers this uh, with nice uh, UIs uh, in, in both both systems, yeah? Outlook and, which, and Teams. Which obviously is, is one of these, the, these huge benefits that, that come with the Power Platform, right? That it is so well integrated into the, the office environment. So, and, and similar like the I don't know, the, the SAP ERP connector in Power Automate that um, simplifies the way how we can browse through the available BARPs and RFCs and like this integration that we see here with the forms trigger, that there there is a trigger out of the box available. So you don't need to um, develop some webhooks, integrations and stuff like that. It, it's just there to to be consumed. And similarly, this, this approval process, it's also just another action that you add into your Power Automate flow. But this one is crucial, you know, this is the only gate yeah, to make sure uh, you have control over what's what's happening. Yeah? Yes. And uh, there's some uh, error handling. Yeah? So in case we don't answer in time, I think it's 48 hours. So if there's too many people on vacation, yeah, it will time out and tell the person uh, we're sorry, um, but uh, please try again in later. Yeah. So it timed out. No one replied in time. Yeah. yeah. So then there's a condition. So if um, this evaluates as true, so we approve this. Yeah. There's again two options. Yeah. If it's um, going in here and there's there's a no, then uh, we again provide an answer to the person who submitted the request via via Teams as push notification. Well, sorry, we we didn't approve, and we can supply a reason. Yeah. There's like a adaptive card. Yeah. When when we click reject, we can actually provide a comment why. Yeah. And this would then be pushed back to, to the person who actually requested them. Yeah? So it has, an, has a nice flow, um, which is also very personal then. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So in this case, we approved. Yeah? So we'll, we look at a successfully executed run. Yeah? So that's why you see um, this expression results here. Yeah? This is not the design view, this is actually the, the runtime view. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So in here, we're asking Azure Directory, Directory for the user ID, yeah? because forms tells us the email address. Yeah, because we configured that to be shared yeah? on forms. There's multiple uh, options that you can uh, provide. We said, well, we want only our organization to be able to respond and record the name. Um, this is required for us to identify. Yeah, but this could also be an anonymous. Yeah, it could be anyone. Yeah? So depending on what type of compliance level you require here. So once we get more user information, we are able to add them to a uh, Azure Active Directory group. Yeah? This is the first governance mean that we that we need. Yeah? So that on, on Azure, we don't add people on an individual basis, but um, group them in, in, in this object so that we can treat them as one. Yeah? So even mm -hmm. if we have to make adjustments on the on the resource group level and the authorizations there, 
we just make the change for the group and not for every person who has access to this environment. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So base, basic governance means. Yeah? And uh, for collaboration, we have a Teams channel yeah, where, where everyone um, is then automatically added through this task here, where people can have conversations about the individual demos, um, new ideas they, they want they want to see added to our environment or um, also talk about issues they have yeah, with whatever problem. Yeah. Well, and this is also then part of the onboarding. Yeah? They get automatically assigned to the Teams channel. In here, um, we are checking the latest version of the password for the SAP backend. Yeah? So when we distribute um, the, the user, um, we retrieve it from here, which is also one way of governing this yeah? if you have it in one single place. Um, and you dynamically ask for the latest version, um, it's automatically distributed yeah, in, in, the right, in the right way. Yeah. And by the way, there, there's another flow when we make a change on Key Vault that automatically distributes the, the new uh, password after the reset to the people um, using it. Yeah. Otherwise, this would be a one go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the most important part, the welcome message. Yeah, the word of Lobo tells you, hey, here I am. Um, this is where you should get started. Yeah, there's a link to the video that Holger created for, to tease what you could expect. And um, there's also the um, the link to the wiki, yeah, where it describes how to use the environment. And this basically gives you um, all the right means um, to let the, your participants know um, where to go look and what to do next yeah? in a nice automatic way. The only thing that Holger or I did was click approve. Yeah? Everything after that happened automatically. Yeah? And I mean, you mentioned that there's a timeout of 48 hours, and I think mm -hmm. so far um, this whole onboarding process uh, happened typically. Yeah. You can see here, it took us five minutes to respond. To ah, this. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Until the, one of us uh, noticed and actually clicked approve. Yeah? But I think, and now just just remember how complicated it was to onboard a new user manually. All these things um, that we needed to assign them to a resource group, that we needed to add them to our Teams channel for the collaboration, that we needed to share the information, how to get started, and all this kind of stuff. So here, this this was really a fantastic way to simplify a manual process that took yeah much much longer to uh, to get started. Yeah, and it grows organically. Uh, you know, whenever there's um, a quick win or a major pain, yeah, uh, we can address through through this and then um, have it run automatically. Yeah. Mm. All right. Yeah. Th those are the the things that we wanted to show here on the on the automation. And again, for, for me, um, I, I'm often asked um, by, by customers, um, can you can you tell me about um, the Power Automate use cases, and then um, you you typically or I typically think always of well what's the, what's the really cool the best um, use case that really brought a lot of value and and we do have obviously these these success stories with um, Coca Cola we have the success stories with with lots of, of customers that have fantastic integrations with Power Platform um, but I think what what's even more important are these smaller wins I mean we would probably not create a success story around um, our automation here but this is something that saved us or s still saves us a lot of time because it's really, as you said, just one click on approve. And there is a great um, um, automation flow behind this, and, and that really helps a lot. And if we go to the customers, there are thousands of these small automations where, where, where customers are using Power Automate, where they are using a connection to an SAP system um, to, to simplify these, these easy um, mundane um, processes. And that's where Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of success stories on, but but they bring a huge value to to the individual user. Well, very often the big companies uh, don't talk about the small um, yes <laughs> small features. Yeah. Uh, like I said at the beginning, the, everything involved uh, has free trial accounts, and from from our um, community grouping GitHub repo, um, you get all the links. Yeah, so where to sign up for M365 Developer Program. Um, where the BTP trial is, yeah, and also for for the Azure part, yeah, and obviously for the SAP backend system, you would look at uh, the cloud appliance library, yeah, 
um, so to do to get the picture picture complete. Yeah? And before we finish, let me show you um, the team's approval screen so that you also see the native part to it. So in here, share again. There we go. So we, in here we have uh, the wiki. There's uh, again the, the forms uh, linked. Yeah, so there's multiple things that you can do from from here. Yeah? And also quite important, yeah, we are uh, resetting our system each week in order to avoid clutter. Yeah, so here you get also the uh, the note about this. And on the on the channel, we have in here we have a notifications um, feed that actually tells you about updates. Yeah? For instance, in here, it's also about new articles that has been published, but also when the system goes going down and if it's back online. Yeah? So to actually tell everyone what's going, what's what's happening. And for the approvals, there's a native app. And native app means exactly that you didn't need to develop anything, right? Um, mm -hmm. We just were able to use this and it, it was just there, so it's just a, an easy way to get started. I need to change my environment <clears throat> to actually see the approvals. And here you're saying, seeing the the, the actual the, the UI and um, who sent uh, what at what time. Yeah? And this is what, what we see here, yeah? we get um, who wanted access? We were able to influence the, the title in here, and uh, we see the justification and the status of it. Yeah? And this is the team's experience. There's the same um, adaptive card-driven uh, approach in, in Outlook as well. Yeah? So wherever you are currently are, yeah? so mostly I get the push notification first there yeah, on Teams. Um, the Outlook is then updated to me that someone else replied or I did already. Yeah, this is how it goes. Cool. No, and, and again, I think this this helped us a lot to um, simplify to onboard um, all the the uh, the users to this environment. Um, we have the teams side to to really foster the collaboration to to exchange um, topics there. So I think that um, yeah, it's really a win-win situation. We're we're using using our own technologies to uh, talk about the technologies and and the the benefits that we're getting there out of the power platform. Roman Reich would always say it's, it's not eating dog food, but drinking your own champagne. Yeah? He doesn't like the phrase. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. OK, good. Martin, thank you so much for walking us through the environment and, and walking us through um, the whole onboarding process. Um, again, I think it's these small things that, that make a, a huge difference. And um, yeah, we, we, we clearly see that there is a huge benefit for, for us um, by, by using these Power Automate flows here. Exactly, yeah. my pleasure. Okay, thank you then everyone and talk to you next week again. Bye-bye. Bye.